Amid all the busyness and struggles and delights of the last few years, we have to keep remembering how much a privilege it has been for us to work on your behalf in a different part of God's harvest field in Nigeria. But we don't have time here to tell you all that God has been doing in our Bible translation work there. In 2020, we didn't have much time in Nigeria as we got stuck in Glasgow with the Nigerian borders closed till October. After the rush back, David had to make up for lost time trying to rebuild the scattered Koro Ashi Bible translation team and get them back into revising Luke's gospel for publication. We don't have time to tell you about all the meetings with church leaders, with translators and local committees to get things going again, the frustrations and the encouragements as gradually more church leaders got involved. We don't have time to show you the revolutionary Ishe language services the team has been putting on, sometimes with David as a special guest, usually without, getting people used to the idea of reading the Bible, praying and preaching the good news all in meaningful language. We don't have time to bore you with the fascinating details of language research, helping Ashe people to figure out how to reliably read and write their spoken language, and the necessary struggles of keeping men, women, children and youth all involved. We don't have time to tell you how we're making baby steps into translating Acts and Mark while still doing lots more training and literacy classes. We don't have time to talk about the two-day reviewers meeting David held in a village primary school. Exciting but sobering to realise senior church leaders didn't even know what Christ means, nor the difference between the temple and synagogues. We don't have time to share the struggles and joys of getting Luke's Gospel published and launched a year ago in print, audio and app into the community's hands to use in the churches. We don't have time to detail the stresses and strains of figuring out budgets and funding applications and gospel-hearted admin to keep the Ashe project going usefully ahead for the next two years. We don't have time to mention the growing Ashe team, the short-term interns David has been mentoring over the last year, and the joys of seeing his former TCNN students joining us as missionary colleagues even as they struggle to find support. We don't have time to list all the ways David has been helping check translations for other translation teams, helping colleagues with computer, translation and linguistic issues. We don't have time to talk about the booming visible church with such great potential to be a rich harvest field if the good news is clearly preached. We don't have time to list the many answers to prayer God has given us, to thank him for watching over us in David's travels and work. But we do look forward to having time after this and over the next few weeks to share more of what God has been doing and what we have been learning about him and the good news of Jesus. When we first came to Nigeria in 2011, Rebecca and Elizabeth were very young and Julie was necessarily limited to looking after them and eventually homeschooling as they got older and were joined by Abigail and Helen. As they've grown, Julie's been looking out for other gospel opportunities that have arisen to make the most of her Cornhill training. Since 2017, she took on the unglamorous, daunting but strategic task of organising our annual retreat, the only time all staff and their families go away together for four nights to a nearby centre to be strengthened as members of the body through Bible teaching and informal time together. Our group's grown fivefold so that we had over 220 at our last one. Julie realised that it's a valuable way to support Bible translation work. Do pray for the upcoming one at the end of October where we hope to introduce the Mark drama. I was driving back from a village trip with a couple of colleagues, this Yaku and John, and out of the blue they just told me how grateful they and their families were for all the hard work Julie puts into a treat, especially prioritising good teaching and good rest and restoration together in the children's ministry. And they were rather hoping that Julie will be back in time to make this year's retreat just as good as normal. Julie's women's Bible study first started in 2014, but stopped when we came back for Helen to be born. However, it's continued to grow since she restarted it in 2017, and she's managed to develop enough leaders that it's not dependent on Julie being around to keep it going. There have been over 50 women since 2017 who've been part of the group. Almost all of these have been involved in some other sort of ministry. There's been a mix of nationalities, not currently as many Nigerians as Julie would like. They've gone away for weekends of study too. Normally meeting on the Thursday afternoon after work. In the last couple of years, Julie's led the women through James, Daniel, Revelation, Philippians, 1 Thessalonians and Hebrews. And others are tackling Colossians over the next few months. There are various other books they'd really like to do, such as Ecclesiastes. Just like Cornhill, she tries to vary what kind of book they study so that the women feel confident that the whole of the Bible is God's word to us, so that there's not any part they feel they can't handle. One of Julie's purposes is to help women really support each other in the ministries they're doing, to make living and serving in Nigeria more sustainable. For me, Bible study is a real lifeline, not just um, to be in good fellowship with other ladies, but to be able to have a regular commitment to come and to open God's word together. Um, especially in all the ups and downs of cross-cultural living, it really is a wonderful opportunity just to read scripture together. 
Um, it's also a lifeline to other people. You know, we can leave our roles and responsibilities at the door and just come and be real um, together, to pray with one another, to walk with one another, and just to see the Lord at work in each other's lives. How are the Robbery girls getting on? We are touched that so many of you asked not just about the gospel ministry, but family ministry too. Helen and Abigail keep going with some of the familiar primary school materials Julie's used at home and enjoy some Bible studies with other missionary kids and playing with lots of other kids on our compound. Abigail's great at making friends and found a good friend in Michelle, our Joss pastor's daughter. Ed Debley helped tutor Rebecca and more recently Elizabeth and Abigail in English. Last time we were back, we considered more about future possibilities for Elizabeth and Rebecca's further studies. And we'd value prayers as we make more decisions, particularly for Rebecca. A year ago, they both started a kind of correspondence course with some online tutors as they moved towards GCSEs. Rebecca's blossoming in languages, Elizabeth's more science and maths focused. And though it's a bit expensive, it's quite hard work and the girls need to take a lot of responsibility for their own learning. It has enabled the girls to keep growing in their education beyond what Julie and I can help with. Rebecca longs for a good classroom experience, but meeting with her friend Dasso for Daily French has been a hilarious highlight of most days in the last year. Bonjour, comment ça va? It's time for French, let's go! There are many joys and blessings for them living in Nigeria, but also struggles too, and every time we move between homes, they leave some friends behind. Isn't it so great the same God cares for us everywhere? It's tricky, isn't it, to know what will be best for our children, and we've had kind friends asking whether maybe we've done our bit and it might be time for us to come back home. But for now, the exciting opportunities in Nigeria are as compelling as ever. The door remains open and perhaps more than ever we have some experience and a bit of a clue about how we can continue to serve God there on your behalf. Our friends there send greetings and we were so touched when on our last Sunday our church called us all up to pray for us as they sent us here. Cross-cultural church isn't easy but it's good to be part of an international family of faith. Just as in Bible lands, Nigerians honour people and show friendship by visiting them, often unannounced. We'd be greatly honoured if you would drop in on us in Cathcart any time. We'll tell you everything you want to know, and surely more. By all means, call us and check if we're in. But do come and be a little Nigerian.